Welcome to Artwork, a professional development program about working in the visual arts in Atlantic Canada. I'm Sarah Jones, the curator at Jones Gallery in St. John, New Brunswick. Today on Digital Strategies for Visual Artists, what are the essential components of an artist's website? And how does one go about organizing those essential components? So those essential components are probably something that you're all familiar with and that will be relevant for most of you. So they include a biography or artist background, CV, so exhibition history, artist statement or something about your practice and your motivations, portfolio, images of your work, contact information, and then also possibly a shop or e-commerce section if you have something to sell. Now I know this section that causes most of you the most organizational angst because you tell me and because I agonize over it also. And that is the portfolio section. So the images of our work, how do we organize and categorize the stuff we do? Because of course the peas cannot touch the potatoes. So this project over here is completely different from that work over here that I also do. And they cannot possibly be housed together. And that this element, that should be on a separate website over there. So the elements of your practice feel disparate to you because you're in it. The separation between projects, disciplines, or media, or subject, etc., that can all feel chasmic when you're the originator. What I have to say about that is have faith in your audience's ability to recognize and interpret various components of your practice. So IKEA makes both meatballs and lampshades, but we're still capable of holding a singular idea or feeling of what IKEA is in our minds. So you, the artist, are the branding glue that holds all of the parts of your practice together in the minds of your audience. And as long as you explain the components or projects in a clear language, your audience, I promise, can process multiple things. So one website can generally hold everything in your portfolio. Just organize the various components in a way that makes sense, but they don't have to be completely walled off from each other. If you have a disciplinarily narrow or media focused practice, then that's really easy. It's simple. You can organize your portfolio by year or by exhibition title, or you can separate by media or by discipline. So here is my video work. And then here is my illustration work. I also will include links to good examples of, of all of these uh, in the video notes. Another question I'm asked often is how much to include in the portfolio section. So when we apply for a, for a grant, for instance, we choose images of previous work or works in progress that support the proposal at hand. The same philosophy should apply to the organization of your website. So what is it you want from your website? Who is the primary audience and what do they need from your website? If projects from over five years ago or 10 years ago are no longer relevant to you and your audience, then you can just take them off the website. You are, are allowed to curate the amount of content and use your discretion as to what to include. And there's a, there's a reason for uh, uh, application limits for the number of, uh, or the number of, uh, limit the number of images you can include in your applications. Your website viewer, like a jury member, can only look at so much. And conciseness can be a really useful approach. In terms of what pages to put where and what, organi or what information to include, that depends once again on your primary or your most important audience. So I'll give you a couple examples of this. So let's say the first scenario, let's say you're a multidisciplinary artist, you're working mainly in installation and your most important website viewers are likely curators of public institutions or galleries, like maybe colleagues, also collaborators. So then ask yourself, what information does a curator generally need from me? Will they find everything they need in a clear and concise way on my website? What kind of tone or presentation would a curator be normally expecting? So they're probably used to reading formal artist statements. So you should probably include one of those. They probably want to know about your current projects and your areas of interest. So put that someplace near the forefront of your website. But in another scenario, like let's say your primary audience is the general public. So not necessarily the arts professional. Let's say you work in, in, uh, in metal, like you're a jewelry artist or you're an illustrator and you sell work directly to the public. 
So then you need to make it really clear how to buy the thing so that the shop page will be more uh, central or be in the forefront of your website. And then a formal artist statement may not be as necessary to the general public or to your buyer. So what kind of practice do you have? What kind of work do you do? Who is your most important audience and what do they need to know? Answer those questions and then organize your website accordingly. We'd like to acknowledge Artworks major funder, Canada Council for the Arts. Thank you for watching and we'll see you again soon.